Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another fancy episode of Bar with an X, where we spell our name with an X that is silent because we can, and nobody's out there telling us that we can't or should not. And I think that's reason enough to do most things in this world if there are no perceivable consequences and stuff like that. Uh, there are tonight's activity with no perceivable consequence is none of the above, because everything we do has a perceivable consequence, at least from this perspective. And I'm sure including a silent X in my name definitely has consequences down the line, although they're imperceivable to me right now. But really, I don't think that matters very much. It's cocktail time, yet again. Cocktail time is here again. And tonight, I was inspired. Actually, last night, I was inspired. The other day, I made a cocktail that used an Amaro spirit that's another Italian Amaro out there, supposedly inspired by other Italian Amaros out there. I picked it up at my local liquor store. It's called Vigo Amaro. And it got me thinking, I have an entire book that is dedicated to Amaro-based cocktails or bitter, uh, or bitter digestive cocktails called Nightcap by Cara Newman. Nightcap, more than 40 cocktails to close out any evening. And when I first got this book, I got it because it had a recipe in it for something called Nochino, which is a black walnut based liqueur that I decided to make and haven't completely finished yet. To set the stage there, my parents' house has a lot of walnuts, black walnuts that fall from the trees and whatnot. They smell weird. They're a little yellow, but they're also a little green, but they're also a little black, depending on when you find them and you know what you do with them, like run them over with a car or step on them or throw them against the tree, which is something that I really liked doing in my youth and honestly, even into my elder years, still continue to like doing when the walnuts are on the ground at my parents' house in the woods. It's a lovely time. But so Nochino is made by basically taking those black walnuts, steeping them in some liquor, whatever you got, vodka, Everclear, you know, something like that, and then mixing it with a couple other uh, things and whatnot, and obviously sweetening the thing up. I've had black walnuts sitting in Everclear for months now. I was supposed to open this thing back up in December, and technically I did, but it is March now. It's definitely been six months since I put those things in there, so that is gonna be a very powerful spirit. But I guess, like, that's good, because if it's too powerful, then all I need to do is water it down. But if it's not powerful enough, then I gotta, you know, sit there patiently and twiddle my thumbs more to wait for it to get really, really good. In any case, it's still in there. It's still sitting. It's still infusing, and I have yet to mix it with sugar, dilute it, or do any of that stuff, because... I'm lazy sometimes. I work. I get tired. I forget that it's even there. Honestly, I had it tucked away in a corner because they say you're supposed to keep it tucked away in like a corner that's not really exposed to much light, uh, which is kind of hard to do with all the windows around here. Actually, it's kind of hard to keep out the light over here. I have blackout curtains to like better better do with the light over here. And it just, I, I just, I didn't do it yet. And the, the daylight saving time is over. So that's why I still got this interesting contrast behind me. Don't worry. Don't worry about that there. But isn't it a lovely day out there? I think it is. It's actually quite rainy. It's very cold out there. So, because it's also cold out there, and I realize I actually have an Amaro spirit now, that actually opened up at least a couple different recipes in this book that I can actually make uh, in a conceivable manner without too many like dire substitutions. And so I was flipping through and found something that complements the kind of end of the winter cool-ish season. It's it's technically spring now. It's been spring for a couple of days now, but to be perfectly honest, it does not feel like it. It kind of smells like spring. Spring has that certain like smell to it. I love the smell of spring. I enjoy the warm weather of the spring. And I also like seeing all the, like, hearing the birds sing and also to see the flowers growing. And if I find a flower that looks like somebody else hasn't been sniffing it or stepping on it or doing whatever nature does to flowers, pollinate. I try to smell it if I can. Sometimes you just gotta stop and smell the roses or the tulips or the dandelions that grow out of the side and the cracks in the sidewalk. Ah, uh, the dandelions. But most of them are weeds. But a dandelion is a weed. In any case, we can all be weeds if we want to when we're sick of it, sipping on a cocktail. Tonight's cocktail is called the Grand Street Cocktail. And apparently, it was made famous by a restaurant called Chumley's in New York City. I have to pull up my notes here. I didn't memorize all this. I looked this up just before. Uh, but Chumley's in New York City apparently closed in the year 2012, and it opened in the year 1922. I did that a little bit backwards, and it was a bit of a speakeasy back in the days of Prohibition. It was located on 86 Bedford Street in Greenwich Village, Village, New York City, and apparently reopened back in the year 2016, and stayed open for four more years until the coronavirus shut everything down, including this well-renowned bar, which apparently was the home for, like, various different, like, like, writers and whatnot, like F. Scott Fitzgerald or... Hemingway and 
probably many others. I'm not much of a bookie, so I wouldn't know, but I'm sure there were others. What is up with people who write books and needing to go to bars? I suppose, I suppose it's to be able to kind of get their feet with, with the local vernacular, the modern contemporary vernacular of the people who walk the streets so that the books that you write will be able to be digested mentally by the people of the streets, the people who will be picking up your book off the side of the, one of the newsstands and be like, oh, who's this Fitzgerald guy? I wonder, and then taking a read. I have not written a book. It's on my bucket list though. I've always wanted to write a book, but I literally have no idea what it would be about. And my idea, and I was sharing this with my fiance the other day, uh, who's off traveling right now. She's not here right now. I'm completely alone. No response, because I'm alone. Uh, but um, I was uh, talking to her about, you know, what kind of book would I write? I don't know if I would write a book. I would just kind of like make a book just for the sake of making a book. And the first idea that came to mind is a book called, This Book Has Pictures of My Face by Cameron Cowell. And it would be a book that has pictures of my face. There would be a preface in the front, maybe like a like a, a in loving memory of anything, I guess, or, or a special thanks to the people who I hold most dear. Incredibly vague, incredibly indistinct, so that everyone I hold close is all accounted for in that preface. And then probably like maybe like a whatever comes at the end of the book, a summary? I don't really know. Maybe it's about the author that just says like, hey, this is a guy who does things. He does things sometimes, little quirky fella. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, if anybody has good book ideas out there that are simple and uh, you, you, you can let, you can write the book, honestly. You don't have to let me know. L write the book yourself. If you got a great book idea, go for it. Don't let your dreams just be dreams. Make those dreams into books. And that's your, that's your motivation for the day. The Grand Street Cocktail is actually a spin on the hot toddy. And by a spin on the hot toddy, it's also made with hot tea. I believe a hot toddy, I don't have the recipe off the top of my head, but I believe it uses peach schnapps and whiskey, or maybe bourbon, or perhaps scotch. I don't really know. It's whatever floats your boat, really. But this one uses an Amaro spirit, some vermouth, and some bitters to top things off. Now, the description that is uh, given for a hot toddy in this book, which I will read from the thing. This is the, this is the page, by the way. Feel free to take a look at the page. Pause, screenshot, if you need a reference. I always like that the whole point of this is to be able to share the recipes anyway. And here's the recipe. We share it here. But the hot toddy, uh, according to a little bit of text written by Karen Newman, is beloved for chasing off chills and warding off colds. Hot toddies are a favorite winter warmer. Although the classic is made with little more than two parts whiskey plus one part each lemon and honey. Whoops, I guess I add the peach tops in there because I like to keep people on their toes. Uh, topped off with plenty of water, bartenders around the country are experimenting with alterna toddies that feature brandy, rum, even amaro. See the left? The left is on this side of the book. Uh, so check what's in your home bar and you just might find your next toddy. Apparently I can make my toddy with damn near anything so long as I've got something hot in it. Like tea. I have tea. I preheated water. I pre-made tea. It's very, very hot and it's in this vacuum sealed container. I hope it's vacuum sealed. It's actually not that hot, so I hope the heat is all on the inside. We'll, we'll see about that when I crack this thing open when I pour the tea in it. If not, I have hot water on the ring. It's over in my stove. I could go get it, potentially hurt myself. Remember, if you're dealing with things that are hot or people that are hot, tiptoe, be careful. You might hurt yourself or others. But this particular hot toddy is the, the um, the Grand Street Cocktail. I mentioned that already. And the description goes a little something like, A comforting hot toddy variation showcases an herbal tea with lots of chamomile, alongside a relatively mellow orange-accented Amaro, courtesy of Jesse Duray, bar manager at the beloved New York City restaurant Chumley's. R.I.P. Chumley's. Rest wherever you are. Probably in the ashes. Or repurposed into another restaurant, perhaps. I am honestly unsure. So the recipe in here uh, to make one serving calls for, uh, I believe it's about a total of four plus one, five, like five ounces. I have a, I just grabbed the most toddy looking mug that I have. It's got a handle, it's not super flashy, and it's got the letter C on it. The C stands for cocktail, obviously. And so I don't have, usually you'd put this in like a, a toddy glass, which is a bit taller. It's got a stem and it's got a handle. I don't have any of those. I've been meaning to run to the thrift store to go get really, really cheap glassware. Now I could go to my local Target or anywhere else and go get glassware, but I am not paying 10, five, anything above $3 for something that I know I can pick up for 50 cents at a thrift store that literally has an entire room dedicated to glasses. If you live in Philadelphia, you can go to Philly Aids Thrift. If you walk in through the front, take your first left, then take another right, take a right, 
then take another left, then another right, you'll find yourself in a room with a bunch of glasses. That's where I go. I don't frequent it because it's very far away from me, but it's a great place to go if you're looking for literally glasses, all types of glasses, and they're like sub dollar. What a deal. Why would I buy, pay $7 for a glass when I can go to the thrift store and buy one for, for quarters? Uh, convenience, probably. That and maybe they're nicer, maybe they're less used. I don't know, it really depends on your needs, but I've been satisfied. But I didn't have a, a toddy glass in my collection, so I opted for the mug. This mug in particular. Um, but this mug holds 16 ounces, so I decided to multiply the recipe that I'm using by three. I will give both both um, ratios and whatnot to make it easier for people following along at home. If you're following along, and if you are, how are you? Has it been a good day so far? Are you able to make yourself a cocktail? Sit down, relax, chill, let the steam off. Let your let your hair do what it do. Let your body do what it do. My hair's a little crazy today. It's been getting longer. I was thinking about cutting it, but I decided not to because I can feel the inner beast within me. Uh, anyway, let's get this let's get this shindig started. The first thing that you're gonna need make yourself some tea. Specifically, something that, at least according to this recipe, has a lot of chamomile in it. I have made my tea, as any good cooking show does. Uh, I'm using this elderberry blackberry tea by Tazo, which doesn't seem like it has chamomile in it. However, it does. I didn't realize that until, so Anna bought this and was like, you like elderberry, right? And I was like, sure I do. So I put this into a thing and I took a whiff, I took a taste and I was like, hmm, that tastes like chamomile tea. I'm not the biggest fan of chamomile tea. I appreciate it, but it's not my favorite out there. And lo and behold, I take a look on the back and it's got a variety of things in it, if I can find the right face of this box. It includes elderberries, orange peel, chamomile flowers, hibiscus flowers, blackberry juice solids, and natural flavor, and soy lecithin. I don't know what soy lecithin does, but it don't matter. In any case, I, because I'm using a little bit larger of a recipe, decided to steep two bags in more water. They say four ounces for one bag, steep for about three minutes. This has been going for a while now, it'll be stronger. So maybe I didn't want to do that, but hey, if it tastes good, then who's complaining? Not me. Um, so if you made your tea, cool. If you didn't, that's all right. You got time. You can spend like three minutes. It's no problem. I still got to get through the other ingredients too, but maybe the time it takes for you to steep your tea, get it all ready, remove the bag, get it done then maybe maybe you still have to have more time to go and get your particular spirit collection or you can just drink tea it's fine too i love tea i drink tea a lot at work and coffee and various other things in any case i'm gonna need my measuring jigger I'll put my cup up here just gonna do a little bit of measuring now this recipe calls for a half an ounce of amaro montenegro as i mentioned the last time amaro montenegro came up it's an italian liqueur I just lost the bookmark. Italian liqueur. What's going on, Dakota? I have big news. You got a job? I got a job too. Fist bump, bro. <laughs> All right. Here's to get ink paid. But Amaro Mont Montenegro is something that my local liquor store did not have, unfortunately. It's an Italian liqueur. I don't know if it tastes the same as this Vigo that I bought at my store. Um, there's only one way to find out, and it's to get my hands on some Montenegro, but I can't get my hands on some Montenegro right now, so that is just going to have to wait for a little bit. So in the meantime, Stand In, uh, Italian liqueur, made in Philadelphia, inspired by Italy? Probably. The recipe calls for half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters. I'm going to triple that for my particular cocktail glass of size. Will I drink the whole thing? Who knows? If it's really good? Probably. I don't know. I had a big dinner tonight. Drink water. Always drink water. So if you're doing the triple like me, it's uh, one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters. And you can put that in whatever thing you do. You don't even need, you don't need a shaker for this. You don't need anything like that. I just need to put my book off to the side. I'm using a, I'm using a spare mask as my bookmark. That's just what I got. In any case, so we're gonna add uh, whatever your quantities are. Uh, Amaro Montenegro, if you have it. If you don't have Amaro Montenegro, I you can use any Amaro, I guess, if you want to. Just let it stand in. I mean, the whole the whole little preface there was that a hot toddy can be made with pretty much anything. So what's holding you back today? Is it yourself? Are you holding yourself back? Don't hold yourself back. Just go for it. Live a little. Feel that. And put your Amaro in your cup of choice. Mine's a little mug. I like that. Today is a good day for Dakota. I'm streaming. Dakota got a job. I'm streaming. I'm the stream. Dakota got a job. He finished his code for class and just got just a great day all around. I had a really, really awesome day yesterday. I was incredibly productive. I did shit at work. Check. I did shit at home. Check. I did the laundry. I did... What else did I do? I made myself dinner. I did the dishes. I did more laundry. 
I, I was working on a program project, programming project for a buddy of mine. I'm, I'm actually making progress on it. I'm working on a text-based video game. It's absolutely nowhere yet. Really? The only thing that it does right now is you can, you can type into it and you can be like, 1D8 and it'll roll a D8 for you. Except it won't actually roll a D8. It'll just be like, 7. And you're like, yay, random numbers! Or pseudo-random numbers in the computer world. In any case, the next cocktail ingredient we need in here is going to be another half an ounce, 15 milliliters, or if you're tripling it like me for your cocktail glass size, it's gonna be about 44 milliliters for one and a half ounces. You need sweet vermouth. I have been running dangerously low on sweet vermouth for a while, and that gave me the perfect excuse to go out and buy some really nice sweet vermouth. I have a buddy of mine who's a, who's technically the boyfriend of a of a colleague of my fiance's, but we're all buddies all around. Who is also like equally into cocktails like me, ex except he's been at it for like four or five years more than me. So he's got all the books, he's got the techniques, he's got he's got the knowledge of it. I I have books. I don't know what's in them. I'm trying my best over here. Um, but he told me that if you're looking for a really really good vermouth, and he actually made me uh, um I think he made the um it was a Negroni I think with. This Carpana Antica formula, it was awesome. It was probably one of the best Negronis I've ever had. It was beautiful. I made myself one of these, and, and the Negroni, the gin, Campari, and then your sweet vermouth. I made one for myself. I think I used, I used Broker's London Dry, this uh, Carpana Antica, and Campari. That's, there are no other Camparis unless you use Aperol. And I had a Negroni with that the other day, and it literally tasted like, like a little bitter bubblegum. It was awesome. I don't think I've ever made something that tasted that unique. It was really, really good. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the bubble gumminess came from here. I don't know, probably. Anyway, I need one half an ounce if you're doing it the regular recipe way or if you're me and tripling because we can. It's a Wednesday night, my dude. Then you can put one and a half ounces in there or about 44 milliliters, depending on what measuring system you hold true to. I, I have ounces. I'm in America. That's how it has to be. I wish I could switch over, but I cannot. How it has to be. Although, I can choose to recite these things in whatever standard measuring degree I want to. I have the power, but conversions will always be posted no matter what, because we're trying to be accommodatable to people here. Yeah, that's how it'd be. And the next part of this is you just top some bitters on that. Now, they call for Angostura bitters. I have Angostura, aromatic bitters. Angostura does many bitters. This is their main one. This is what I have. They usually call for a dash. If we're tripling, I'm going to call for three. And the only reason, by the way, the only reason that I'm tripling is because I just want to try to keep the ratios the same. And to be honest, there's going to be a sh like a relatively three, three quarters of this drink is water anyway, the tea. So it kind of dilutes all the alcohol and whatnot over the cross of it. You know, you have more volume. I'm not going to take the whole damn thing down at once. I will probably take my time with it. I have to take my time with it. Why wouldn't I take my time with it? Anyway, let's uh, let's stop with that talking and do some bitter stuff. Do some of the bitters. There's the bitter amaro in here. There's the bitter bitters in here. It's everything you could possibly ask for. And you got sweet vermouth to sweeten things up a little bit. Plus tea, chamomile. It's gonna be great. One, two, three. And that's what I'm gonna go with. Awesome. It's a little bit of a simpler cocktail tonight. There's not too many crazy things going on. Yeah, I think the hardest part was just, uh, just mixing the tea for yourself. Which again, I've got an elderberry blackberry that's got a bunch of chamomile in it, so that's what I've got. And uh, just to show, this is indeed tea on the inside. I hope the water's still hot enough to make a steam. Ooh, can you see that steam? Can we see the steam coming off? We can see the steam coming off. Wow, I like that. It's hot tea. Ladies, gentlemen, and those who fall in between or beyond, it's hot. Don't touch. Honestly, this might actually be too hot for me to drink. We'll see, we'll see. I might have to just suck it up for the purposes of this. Anyway, so after you've added your um, your Amaro of choice, or any other spirit really, your sweet vermouth and your dashes of bitters, just top it off with your tea. Preferably something with chamomile in it. Other than that, you can use any sort of herbal tea, at least according to this recipe. And we like versatility. That's what we like, versatility. I'm not gonna bother doing the close-up cam this time around because to be perfectly honest, there's nothing much to see here, to be honest. It's just kinda, I'm just kinda pouring things into a glass. That's kinda all we're doing. Making a slight bit of a mess because I've raised it a little bit. It looks pretty good. All right, I think I used all of it. Oh, there's a little bit left in there. That, that's fine. That's fine. In any case, and of course, we have to remember we're trying to up our garnish game. So to up your garnish game this time around, we're just going to put a little uh, lemon lemon wedge. We're just going to put a little lemon wedge in it. I think 
I think the toddy goes both ways. You can either put the lemon on top and let it just sit there, kind of a little wedge on the side, or like, I, I mean, the instructions that I have calls for uh, just straight up taking the lemon, making a wedge and dropping it in your glass. Um, I'm gonna drop it in, cause I have nothing to lose. I, literally, I have nothing to lose. Well, I have everything to lose, but not when it comes to lemon slices, not really. Um, the way I do my lemon slices is I'm gonna take my lemon, I'm gonna cut it in half, down the side lengthwise just like that oh i'm making a mess because the table is wonky excuse me i'm gonna take my beverage and i'm gonna put that on a surface that won't wobble around also i'm gonna wipe this up a little bit that's kind of sticky don't want that staining it's not gonna stain it's just gonna get sticky it's fine make mistakes as so long as you there's no problem with making mistakes so long as you just clean up after yourself and honestly this doesn't absorb like any of that that just kind of pushed it off the side this feels like a tomorrow's Cameron problem. In any case, we were cutting a lemon, so let's keep cutting the lemon all the way down the center. Now I have, now I have half lemon, half lemon like that, and honestly, just kind of like going from whatever angle suits your fancy. 45-ish degrees, 45-ish degrees. You know, one day, when the hell I'm gonna have a real close-up camera, and then you could get it full frontal garnish cutting. Uh, but not today. Uh, I don't have an extra thousand dollars laying around to uh, spend on a camera. I just, I just don't. We got a budget. We got a budget, baby. That's what we got to do. Uh, I'm gonna take my thing, put it over here, swap things out, drop it down, put it over here. There we go. How's the front of this looking? It's looking fine. It's looking okay. Now, I think it looks prettier. I was saying I was gonna drop it in, but I think I'm gonna put it on the side. Because honestly, I think I think that's going to look prettier for my particular demonstration here. I'm just going to cut a little slit in the lemon. Just kind of put it on the side. Do you like it that way? Yeah. That feels wonky in that direction. I'm going to do it the other direction. Maybe? Maybe? Oh! I like that. That's not so bad at all. Ladies, gentlemen, and those in between or beyond, we have the Grand Street Cocktail, which was created with the following ratios, which you can double, triple, quadruple, or have to your desire. Four ounces of a chamomile-based or other herbal tea, aka 120 milliliters, one half an ounce, one half an ounce, just half an ounce, 0 0.5 ounces or 15 milliliters of an Amara of your choice. They recommend Montenegro. I chose Vigo because that's what I've got. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of sweet vermouth. I've got, there's a Capano Antica formula. I don't, I can't read the bottle. I put it down. Oh, well, that's okay. I have bad memories sometimes. And then a dash of Angostura bitters or I guess any other aromatic bitters. Nobody's it. Nobody's holding the gun to your head and you to follow these recipes. You can do whatever you want, whatever you've got. I have a ton of, I have a couple of different bitters up there that I'm trying to you know, change up my Manhattans and whatnot with every once in a while. Yeah, probably. I can put bitters on whatever I want to soon. But I got like grapefruit up there, orange bitters. I got chocolate bitters, sassafras bitters. I'm pretty sure there's a fancy one up there. It's in a small black container. I don't know what it is. It might be black currant. I honestly don't remember, and I cannot read it from here because I think it would be impossible for me to do so. Not unless I turn the camera and like zoom in on it, but that's so much effort. In any case, you just kind of put that in a container and then top it off with your tea, whatever the size is, uh, and that's it. That's how you do it. And it's just to stir. To, to stir. So, um, all right. We can stir that. Stirry, 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 stirry. I do the fancy, like, you know, you twist the thing around and whatnot, but, like, to be perfectly honest, there's no glass, there's no, like, ice in there. There's nothing for it to go against. I don't know if it helps very much. I've got a cool little spiral going on here. Honestly, that's good enough for me. How hot is that? Not bad at all. That's not that hot. That's fine. That's, that's doable. That's doable. Interesting that it didn't call for any, like, viscous syrup, like, for example, uh, like, uh, honey. I got honey laying around. This honestly would probably go great with honey. And if it ain't if it ain't as sweet to my liking, I may just go and get some honey to add to it. Grand Street cocktail, everybody. Lovely. The C stands for cocktail. It always does. It's really hot for my taste buds. Ooh. That's different. Very different. The first thing that I get is I'm pretty sure I'm tasting the vermouth in there. Because when I previously when I previously used this vermouth, the uh, Capana Antica, it had a bit of like a bubblegummy flavor to it, and this is like almost bubblegum, 
But I think the bubble gumminess is getting mixed up with the like the uh, the woodiness of the Vigo Amaro, and it's 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 coming across as something that's a it's sweet, but it feels it tastes almost floral now. Like I don't get bubble gum anymore in terms of like sweetness or like the air around it. It's more like a like a floral. Like I imagine this taste is the way that a flower smells, which kind of makes sense because with the tea like this, which is forward in like the elderberry and mostly chamomile, at least in my opinion, it's not surprising that you're getting some other flower notes coming in there. I didn't take a very big sip. It's a very small one. It is very hot. I'm gonna man up this time. I'm gonna go for it. And it tastes like... Oh, that, goes down, that goes down so well. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna be honest. First time I made a hot beverage. No. Not the first time I made a hot beverage on this show. A while back. Probably during one of the cocktail parties. The longer ones. I haven't done one of those in a while. But it's nice. It leaves... It leaves... The bitterness is not on the top of the tongue. It does not hit you first. The bitterness stays on the back of the tongue. And it kind of hangs around back there. And just kind of like... It's not a bad bitterness. It's not like a bad taste that you want to like get out of your mouth. Like, oh, give me some water. Let me wash this down. It's, it's like pleasant. It's like... It doesn't feel bitter. I know it's bitterness because that's how it tasted when it hit my tongue. It doesn't feel bitter anymore. It almost feels soft. That's probably not the right, right way to describe it, but it's not that bad. I'd say, I'd say overall it's floral. It tastes a lot like the, I'd say it's very, it's very Amaro forward comparatively. It's got the vermouth in there. Uh, what else was there? You know, honestly, Remembering that there was Angostura bitters in there? I could see that too. There's a bit of a spice to it. And I think our Angostura to me is a little, a little spicy. Spice like spice like cinnamon spice, not spin spice like pepper fire. Um, it's nice. Honestly, despite the fact that there's a lot of tea in here, it doesn't really do it doesn't really do a job of like masking many of the flavors. It's it's pleasant. I think it contributes to the flavors coming from the Amaro and the Vermouth. And that gives it a pretty cool cool color. Can I can I get that up there? What do we got? Hey, what is this, Jordi NY? Jordi NY? Jordi me? We are creating a cocktail. How did you end up here? Well, I'm sure it all started with a set of two parents, or perhaps one. Science is amazing these days, to be perfectly honest. Um, and it's cocktail time. And we made, just to help out with the recipe, so the stragglers. Oh, I completely lost my page. Excuse me. Let's go back to that. If you, if you don't mind me. Grand Street Cocktail, inspired by or created by Chumley's in New York. It's closed now, very sad. COVID takes away the best of us. Um, and it's made with uh, an Amaro, uh, uh, Amaro, sweet vermouth, Angostura bitters, and herbal tea to your liking. Could it be any herbal tea? Of course it can. They say chamomile. Chamomile, chamomule, chamomile. That didn't work out. And you can garnish it with a lemon wedge or any citrus, I don't know. I don't make the rules around here. You do! Only if you want to. I mean, you might not be the kind of person who wants to make the rules or likes to make the rules. Honestly, that type of that type of freedom is sometimes scary. To me, at least. I don't need to be in control all the time. That's totally okay. In any case, it's not too bad. I think the last time I had a hot beverage like this, specifically a hot toddy, was like years ago. I want to say it was when I first turned 21, which was three years ago. I can do the math. And I think I just like, I was like, oh boy, I can't wait to have a hot toddy. I've heard so many good things about it. And I know it's got honey in it. So it must be really sweet and absolutely delicious. And I was like, mm, this isn't what I like. It was a little more bitterness forward back in the time. I'm sure I appreciate it a little more now. My taste buds have rounded out, if that makes any sense. And I think I appreciate that now. I definitely appreciate it. It's very good. Nice indeed. Absolutely. In any case, very, very nice. Honestly, and now now that, oh, I need to, excuse me. I need to take my obligatory Instagram picture so that the world knows how pretty my cocktails are. It's a glass, it's got a C on it. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. It tastes like yummy. Isn't that beautiful? And it's got a little lemon wedge on it. Beautiful, that's gonna make for, I was gonna say a beautiful post. It's gonna make for a post. It's gonna be great. Now I'm gonna take the lemon wedge. Now that the photo shoot for the drink is over, and just drop it in. I'm just gonna, just gonna stir it a little bit. I don't know if that's what's intent to do. It's gonna put a little bit of the like, mostly. It's not gonna get much lemon juice in there, but via osmosis, it's gonna pull out some of those oils because when there isn't a lot of flavor stuff 
in the solvent, the flavor stuff goes into the solvent because that's osmosis. And if you flip that process around, like taking salt out of salt water, that's reverse osmosis. There's a little science for you. Chemistry's cool. Does it make it taste any different? Does it smell any different? No, no it does not. I know this isn't, this isn't totally correct. Not at all. However, I swear for a hot moment, I tasted bacon. I'm not saying like bacon-y or like smokiness. I could have sworn I tasted bacon for like a hot second. That's not normal. Or maybe it is. Maybe that's another angle to this drink. It brings out the umami-ness and everything. Umami being the flavor, not umami. No, that's not what we're talking about. Don't want to be tasting that. Not at all. In any case, that's our cocktail for the day. Why is there a, get this fly out of here. Got him. That's our cocktail for the day, folks. Today we made the, oh, I forgot it already. Grand Street Cocktail. That's what we made. That's what the notes say. And it was a lovely time indeed. What we're gonna do now, this is actually a lot shorter. It's a lot shorter than we usually do. Short, sweet, straight to the point. Very simple cocktail this time around. It didn't take much time to go through and mix everything up. I didn't have any of my shaky shakes or anything like that. I'll do one bar trick. I'm gonna take this spoon and I'm gonna spin it around on my finger. Watch this. That's so cool. That's so cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, ego time over. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna switch myself back over to the other side. I'm gonna play a little bit of Hollow Knight tonight. I actually, I started a little bit earlier tonight and we're gonna go see my youngest brother has his final high school performance of his high school career tomorrow and I gotta make sure that I go and see it. And that just means I have to shove everything that I usually do for these streams, editing, thumbnails, posts and whatnot, back a little bit. So I'm gonna be staying up a bit tonight, just for a little bit. But alas, there's a little bit of time until we get there. So if you like what you saw, stick around. If not, that's okay. You're totally entitled to that. We don't need to force you to do anything. I'm not your parents. But I enjoyed myself, and I will enjoy myself next week as well. That felt weird to say. On another Wednesday cocktail evening, Wednesday cocktail hour, um, so to all the folks out there, hope you're feeling well. Hope you're being healthy. There are a lot of people at my work right now who are very sick. I am not sick yet, which is good. I don't want to be sick. That would not be very fun. Although I would get to work from home or just stay in bed, which are both good things in and of their own regard. In any case, to everyone out there, have a wonderful evening if it's the evening where you are. Have a wonderful day if it's the day where you are. Perhaps the sun is just setting. Kind of like me? Is the sun setting? Oh, it's set by now. It's just dark now. Dark and dreary and probably gonna rain. But no matter where you are, the party continues. Have yourself a good one. Good vibes until the next time. That's not my catchphrase. I took it from somebody else. Love you, bro. Anyway, peace out, everybody. I will see you on the other side. So long, y'all. Love you. Bye. That one. Whoa, that's the wrong screen. <laughs> Sorry, that's the wrong screen. I'm gonna go to the other one. Peace. Show me. Whoa, hey there. You are large and proud. I mastered the dash slash. Hold X to concentrate energy into the nail. Release the button while dashing to perform the dash slash. Ooh.